Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you saw in the introductory the ephemera box that we're going to be making today. Um, we are making the box and all of the little divider boxes to go inside of it. Uh, bear with me as I'm still learning my way around YouTube and learning around my way around doing videos. But this is the box that we're going to start with. <clears throat> it's a cardboard tray. Um, it's actually a lid from a paper box. Uh, it held like the packages of copy paper. Um, so I'm going to use that as the base for making the ephemera box. Um, if you don't have a tray like this, um, you can use uh, cut up boxes, corrugated cardboard boxes. You could use a large cereal box, like this one for example, and just um, cut out the top part of it and then put the box back together and you have yourself an instant little tray. You could use the, the little trays that come from uh, pet food or soup cans or um, pop can trays. You could phone a friend who works in an office. Um, or you can build a box right from scratch from scrap cardboard. It's, that's entirely up to you. But I'm going to work with this box here because it's a good size. Um, and in order to work with this box, there there is a little bit of work that has to be done. And so I have them in different stages. So this one, I've opened up the one flap here and I'm just going to show you how I pull the flap apart. You may have to use, um, well this one came apart pretty easy, but you may have to use like a, a flat pair of scissors or something to open it up or a screwdriver or something to open it up. But once I've got it all flattened out, I take off any of these little pieces of glue that are sticking up and get the box out nice and flat. Now sometimes these boxes have a little bit of a hilly surface to them. They're a little dented in. It's hard probably to see on, on the screen, but they're dented in. I will just take an iron and a damp cloth and iron over it to flatten it out a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of give there. But again, I'd probably wait until the box is done and then see if it really matters to you once you have it full of stuff. So these little corners are the first thing that I cut out. I've cut out the two here on the one side. And I'm just going to cut them out on this side. And discard them. And I'm not throwing stuff on the floor. I have a box on the floor that I'm throwing my scraps into. And then I turn the box over and wherever there was a score or a fold, I just take my scissors and I run across here so that we get it nice and flat so it's easier to work with because I'm going to cover this box uh, with uh, book pages so I just go around it with my scissors and flatten it out you could again take a damp cloth and an iron and go over it but that's entirely up to you and I would test a small area first because I don't know your iron I don't know your methods but a pair of scissors will work to get it nice and flat <clears throat> So that's it for that sample because I work extremely fast. I've already got part of the box ready. <clears throat> Ta da! So the job is to next cover the sides of the box, um, cover the, the back side of the box, and then possibly cover the bottom of the box. Maybe you won't. Um, but I do, so so that's a, a personal choice whether or not you want to do that. Um, in order to cover the box, there's a number of things that you can do to cover it. You can use book pages, which I've got here. I've torn up a bunch of book pages into small, manageable pieces. You could use scrapbook papers, um, pretty digital papers that you've printed off in, on your, from your computer. You could use paper napkins, wrapping paper, all kinds of painted papers. Maybe you do uh, collage papers. You can, you can um, cover it with those. You could cover it with newsprint or catalogs if that's what uh, works for you. 
So I've got my glue here. I'll just move some of this over. You can see I cut cut out or tore up some pieces and manageable pieces. It's nothing nothing fancy. I just take my my uh, tear ruler and just cut them in half as I go along. If, I, if they're too big or too small. So I have a glue pad here that I use for doing my gluing on. And it's just a catalog that I can, again, tear the pages away and start over again. So I'm just going to grab a piece of paper. Get my glue stick out. And start applying the glue. Now I use a paper glue stick for this part. Oop, I have two pieces there. And then I go as close to the corner as I can, but not going over it. And I, I, I go up to the crease as, uh, as close as I can, but not going over it. And this way you won't have papers buckling when you go to fold it back up again. But I do make sure I leave myself enough to wrap around. And so then it's wrapped around the other side, and I, I give it a good pinch. I also use my glue cap. Remember, I've told you these are handy little tools. I hope you're saving these because I have a fun project coming up. And then I use it to uh, apply the, press the paper into the cardboard. And then I take a second piece. There's lots of steps to this, although they're all easy steps. Um, so I'm going to just run you through them pretty quickly. And I do the same thing, and I just overlap slightly, going close to the crease in the box, and leaving myself enough to wrap around. And press it into place. You may have to go back and, and pick up some of these little bits and touch it up with glue afterwards, but you'll find them as, you, as you're going along. So supposing this next piece isn't long enough to take it all the way to the bottom here and leave you enough to wrap around, then I work on the wrap around part first. And I just alter my papers for a different look. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason as to why I'm picking one paper over another, but just a little bit of an overlap and just gently pulled back and folded down and use your handy little tool that comes with every glue stick free. Now, I lose these on the table all the time, so I even have a red one from another type of glue that is easier to find, but I can lose that one as well. So now I have this little space here. I might take another piece of paper and tear it into a longer strip and just do enough to cover that empty spot because my next piece of paper might be long enough that it can go right around. And it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. It doesn't matter if it has a margin edge. I don't worry about that when I'm creating these boxes. And trust me, if you make one, you will be making a few of these. So once I've gotten to the end and I've wrapped around, I do the same thing on this side, going all the way to the bottom of the box, but not going over the box. And this is so that once you've got the box put together and you do the bottom, if you choose, um, you just wrap around that little bit and it's not going to be subject to uh, opening and closing like this. So you're not going to have that gappiness um, where it hasn't adhered and there's a little space. So wait for wrapping around the corners until after you're done. So on this side, I just wanted to show you that this piece here is kind of wonky. It needs a little bit of a repair to it. And so to do that, I just have a couple pieces of cardstock here. And what I do is I just cut a couple pieces. This could be a file folder or cardstock, it really doesn't matter. 
and I'll use a wet glue or like a tacky glue or uh, whatever your glue preference is but something a little bit longer uh, stronger than a glue stick and of course because I'm on camera it's not visual or glue you hear the snow blower that's Tom blowing snow yes in New Brunswick we did get some snow and uh, so he's out there blowing snow so I use this cardboard now to act as a little patch or a repair for this rough edge I hope you can see what I'm doing here and I just bring it up to the top of the box And then I take a couple of those little strips and I use this almost like a, like a glue tape to hold it in place. And then I do the same thing on this side, and that just gives it that strength. You'll, you'll see that you don't have that wonkiness anymore, that it's not moving around. And then I proceed to wrap it exactly the same way that I did this side. So once you have all four sides covered in paper, you want to start to close up the box. And this box on the inside, or the sides measures about three and a quarter inches tall. If you were to hold it up with the ruler, it's about three and a quarter inches tall. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna cut a couple of strips of cardboard or, or um, scrap cardboard into three inch by about one and a half inch strips. right back I'm just right here cutting this paper so I've just cut two more pieces of cardboard in about a one and a half inch wide strip and you can use your scoreboard to score down the center I'm just going to use the back of, or the end of my scissors and give it a couple of scores down here so that I have a nice fold and it doesn't have to be perfect you can see that I have a little bit more on one side, a little less on the other side. And for the sake of showing you again, I'm just going to take my scissors. And you can use a butter knife. Uh, you could use a you can use a scoreboard. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just enough to make you a quick, crisp fold in your in your package. So here again. <clears throat> I'm going to put the uh, wet glue or the stronger glue onto it. Back and forth. This is how you get me quiet, putting glue on. Now, if I were to bring this box up and match corner to corner, some corners are going to be off a little bit because there was cardboard from the other side. The manufacturers don't make these boxes perfect. So in order to get that perfect corner look, I'm, I'm taking the, the uh, cardstock, wrapping it around, and creating kind of that square. You could use a square to know exactly the measurement, but I just kind of eyeball it and holding my fingers inside and pressing to get a nice straight corner. And then I use the same process for taping by using small strips of paper. And I will tape around the corner, going close to the top edge, but not over. You don't want that wrinkled piece that doesn't fit anywhere. And I just wrap it around the corner as close as I can, kind of sneak up on it. Okay. 
and I'll do the same thing at the bottom. You can see there's a little bit of a hole there from where the boxes don't meet, the box sides don't meet. And I will wrap around the corner, but not going over in any way. I hope you can see this. Um, just as close to the edge as possible. Just sneak up on it, that's what I say. Until it's completely covered and you don't know that that cardboard is there. And then I will do the same thing. Okay, a little unprepared, but I will do the same thing on the inside, but this time I'll put glue on the on the folded point and, and do the same thing there to, to glue it into place, bringing it up close to the top without going over. And then I will use some some paper to cover over and hide that that seam. I don't try to go into the corner and across. You can if you have the time and patience. Um, but even just getting close enough to the edge by gluing another piece here and wrapping it around will be plenty to hide that piece of cardboard and to reinforce it even more. So I continue until all four sides are done, doing the corners, wrapping it around, wrapping it around so that it gets close to the bottom. And then I flip it over and yes, I do the bottom. You don't have to, you can decide where to quit. You can decide how fancy and how um, how your box should look. It's entirely up to you. But if I come to your house and I see your box looking like this, I'm gonna call you on it. I am, I'm gonna say, hey, let's finish this box. So once you have it finished, You hear the birds chirping? Okay. Once you have it finished, and we'll pretend that this one is finished, even though it's not, we will pretend for now. You have to decide how you want to fill it. Now you're going to make an assortment of different boxes to fit in this tray because your ephemera comes in different sizes. So you want to be able to add um, greeting card size ephemera. You want to be able to have tags, uh, maybe some journal cards, whatever you have finished and ready to go to put into your journals. So I like to use a combination of recycled cardboard and I will use things like, for example, here's a cracker box that I've cut. I got this gingerbread cookie box that I cut down. So I might. It's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. This is a stovetop stuffing box. And perhaps you have a cookie tray. These are, these are great for holding clusters. But it truly is like putting together a um, puzzle. Because you if you're using different size boxes for different um, items that you want to put in there, you have to figure out how you can best make it work. Maybe you make your own boxes out of cardboard. Look at that. That works nice. So you can make your own boxes and you can do it in the same method that I've used to uh, do the corners of the boxes by, by uh, adding paper around it or cardboard around it to make your box. You can make boxes out of scrap of paper ugly scrapbook paper um, <laughs> but they are a little bit flimsy so I have a different method for making them out of scrapbook paper because this is a little bit uh, flimsy to work with you can use a Kleenex box now how I did my boxes any of the boxes that I use is I open it up completely first I hope you can see what I'm doing Now in this case, this Kleenex box, I wanted to cut it so that they're, they're tall pieces that fit in this way. And because my box is three and a quarter inches tall, I know that if I come in at around three inches tall, that's, that's pretty good. I wouldn't worry about the quarter inch in any way because you sort of want it to be under your box uh, edge, uh, the outside tray edge. Um, so I'm going to cut this box at three inches. 
but I'm cutting it at three inches from this point because once I cut it, I'm going to then put this back together in order to make the box. So I'll just quickly cut this. And as you can see, I can get two out of this box and still have a piece left over. So I'm cutting it three inches from the fold line. I don't think you can see my cutter in there, which is okay anyway. Now I have this little piece left over. I'm going to save it because it could be used for clusters. It's pretty paper. Uh, it could be used for making a couple of tags. And it also could be used to make a little spacer. So once I've cut the box, I will then put it back together. I can remember how I took it apart. Put a little bit of glue on it. And a little bit of pressure. And I now have another box that I can fit into here. So now I'm thinking that maybe, maybe I want both of these in here. It's, it's one of those things, like I said, you'll be playing jigsaw in order to get the best fit. And these little plastic ends, I would just cut them off. And I would most likely, knowing myself, I will... I will reinforce this with a piece of cardboard inside. So it'll measure three inches by whatever the height of the box is, and then, then it'll be squared off. And this, this tray is great for clusters. If you're making a tray to, and you have a lot of clusters or small embellishments or small ephemera that you want to put in into a holding space. But for me, it's a little too crinkly. So I will just either add some more um, handmade boxes or this type of a box. I can also take a Kleenex box again, Kleenex tissue, I should say tissue, not Kleenex, and cut it the long way. So then I, I, all I'd be doing is cutting out this piece here to fit in to make the longer box. Look at that, that's pretty good. Um, so I will, I will trim this one down to make the longer box. But now that this is made, these boxes are all pretty ugly. Um, and I don't, I know that they're gonna be filled with stuff. I know that the focus is going to be on the ephemera that goes inside of it, but it's just me and I, I really would like it to look a little bit more finished. So, here's a box with the finished ephemera boxes in it. Now, I wanted this one specifically for a project that I'm going to have coming up, but I am going to go back and finish this one um, because I will have another video coming up uh, to use this style of packing or um, sorting. Um, but this... This box here is made with scrapbook paper, just like this one, and I use the same type of process to cover it um, by, by wrapping over top. And actually, before I put the box together, I did both sides of the scrapbook paper in the book page and then in some plain paper underneath, like this one. And these are also sealed with varnish. <laughs> That's just because. Um, so you can see already the difference in this box and this box being just the scrap of paper. So wrapping it with the extra paper over top and the paper inside has made it a little bit sturdy as well as putting the sealer on top of it. Now, when you're making these boxes, it's okay to have some empty space um, because you might have items that are, you only have a couple of them, like maybe some envelopes or some signature pages that you just want to store in a, in a spot together with your ephemera. 
So leave yourself some room where you can add different things. Maybe some things take up a whole box and you have a few extra because you, you've made 20 more for upcoming projects. You can still tuck those in there. Um, you can also rearrange your boxes so that you have the space here. Um, you can you can make a long box if you like or put in a spacer in the box which, which is where I would use something like this fold it to make a, a spacer to fit into that corner of course you'd have to cut it down to the size that you need and then you now have three spaces so that's entirely up to you as to how you want to fill your box up with boxes so I'm just going to go over some of my notes here that I've got um, so the boxes that you can use to cut up for inside could, inside could be cracker boxes, tissue boxes, food, even paper tubes. Um, I could take this box and add some paper tubes into it. I hope you can see that. And use that for maybe some smaller ephemera. Or maybe I have uh, things that I want to add, like bookmark tags or uh, very skinny tags that would fit into these slots. I don't want to keep them all separate. So you can use paper tubes. Um, you can use the ready-made boxes by cutting up uh, cracker boxes or make your own out of scrapbook paper or chipboard or mat board. Um, you, and then if you're using things like mat board or chipboard, you would build your box first and then do the covering because it's too hard to uh, cut and fold um, once you've got the paper covered on it. You can cover your, your boxes with book pages like I've done. I've used an assortment of book pages. You can cover them with junk papers, scrapbook papers, digital papers, napkins, wrapping paper. Maybe you do your own hand painting of paper or watercolor painting paper. You can uh, use those. You can use uh, newspapers or catalogs. And then the ceiling is, again, up to you. Now, another thing you can do is you can, you can glue all these into the bottom of the box. See, this box has a little bit of a hill to it as well. Uh, but you can glue all these into the bottom of the box. But then they don't move around. And then you don't have the option of changing them out. And maybe you're working on your, your um, journal and you, you just want to go in and add tags to all of the book pages that you've made a spot for tags. And you just want to take the tag box out of the box to your work table to, to just insert tags. So having them loose allows you to move them around and, and make that option. And I'm just looking at this box in here. And, oh, look how nice that fits. Okay, I might have to rethink this one. So just doing that uh, in itself has given me an extra spot in here. The boxes aren't moving around too much. And once it's full, you won't notice that it's just an empty gap in here. But I'll have to decorate those for sure. Um, so the further decorating is something that is a personal choice. And when I say personal choice, like I had a long talk with myself. And I asked myself, what if, and of course self-answered, I said, what if um, I put some napkins to decorate these boxes? And what if um, I put some nice little feet on these boxes? And what if I filled these boxes with toilet paper rolls? Um, how would that look? I just have to include my friend Heidi in here when I say, here's the big finale, Heidi. Here is a box, same box, that started out as scrap of cardboard, is now a decorated box with napkins, with feet, and I even used a piece of chipboard to make a cover for the bottom to cover up the screws that are holding the feet on and now I'm going to fill it up with toilet paper tubes I know you're not going to see that beautiful chipboard base at the bottom 
but I can have this sitting on my desk now and have tools in it. I can have um, my felt markers, my pencil crayons, my watercolor pens. Um, there's a multitude of uses that I could have this on my on my desk to use. I can have three or four glue sticks in a, in a container. And isn't this much prettier than having a plastic box or a plastic tub? Um, Again, it's just your personal choice and preference as to how far you want to take decorating a box like this and how far you want to take decorating um, and filling it with ephemera. So just in case you didn't see my finished box at the beginning, you can see how many boxes I have to do here. I'm coming right back. This is a finished ephemera box. So as you can see, I have large tags in here. It all depends on the size of boxes that you put inside. I have journal cards in here. I have a little spot for snippets and clusters. Some smaller journal cards. Um, some floating pockets. Along the side here, I have some uh, signature papers and I have some of my covered envelopes. If you saw my tutorial on envelopes, these are uh, some of them are ready to go to make into pockets. At the back here, I have bingo cards um, that I've added into, into my um, box. So this holds all kinds of things that I can now put into my journals. Uh, again, I have some flip cards that are ready to put in. And it's just a fun display to sit on one of your tabletops. Um, it shows off your, your uh, ephemera. It brings you joy and inspiration to see how it looks. Um, and it's just a fun thing that you, you can come along and say, oh, well, I'm, I'm almost out of um, journal cards, so I can, I can make a few more to fill the box. So I hope this was enough of a tutorial to get you started to make your own box. And I'm hoping that you'll even consider making a second box um, because if you make a second box, I do have another tutorial that I'm going to show you how to um, dissect a bunch of uh, books and, and turn it into ephemera that's ready to be used and decorated for putting into this box. So you'll have a box that's halfway done and a box that's full done. But if you have a second box ready, then you can join me in my next video to do that. But making these boxes for ephemera is not the only thing that I'm using them for. Um, these boxes have so many uses. As I showed you with the tools, you can use it to put tools into. You can use it for for um, embellishments. You, maybe you have different embellishments that you like to keep organized. Um, sewing notions. Oh, if you had this on on your sewing table and you had uh, rick rack and seam binding and and threads and spools in it, um, you can use it for uh, uh, craft supplies. You can have. Um, like for paints, you can have bottles of paint in here, maybe your favorite paints, maybe your favorite inks and stamps. You could have sponges and stencils. Um, if you're a scrapbooker, Lori, <laughs> I know you're watching, Lori, um, you could use this for your card making supplies. So you could have a variety of envelopes in here ready in different sizes. You can have your, your paper pre-cut and ready to make a card. You can have your card stock scraps that you use for die cutting. So there's lots of uses that way. You can use it for children's supplies, uh, like children's uh, crafts. If you have a box for them and, and it's filled with pom-poms and googly eyes and um, pipe cleaners and things that they can use and, and, and glue, um, then they have a ready-made uh, play box uh, for when they are uh, being creative. You can use it for Christmas supplies. Um, maybe you, you work on your Christmas journals once a year, so you could fill this box with ribbons and embellishments and small uh, cardstock scraps and papers that you use for your Christmas decorating. Um, ribbons and laces. If you carded your, your ribbons and laces and um, lined them up in the box here, how delicious would that be just to, to see this array of beautiful things just to inspire you and get you ready to make more, more fun projects. You can use this for packaging material. 
if you are a person who uh, sends out, ships out products, or you package some of your products nicely, Heidi, um, you can use the box, a box like this to hold your fancy bags. You can hold um, envelopes for mailing. You can hold uh, uh, baker's twine and ribbons. If you're a baker, uh, Heidi, <laughs> you can use this as a kitchen catch-all. Um, we, ha we get coupons, we get, uh, you know, the coupons for restaurants, we get, uh, mail, uh, bills, receipts, uh, it, you, maybe you, it's a place for you to hold a piece of, uh, uh, a roll of scotch tape uh, or in a ball of string, a pair of scissors. So in the kitchen, this can be great for that. You can use these for, for makeup, for jewelry. Um, so you could have one in a, in a bedroom. You could make one for your teenage daughter to put all her nail polishes in one and her makeup and her bangle bracelets. You could use it for uh, another child where you have hair, hair supplies in here or hair products. Um, it's use, it's useless. <laughs> it's endless as to what you can use it for. Um, so I hope you like this tutorial. If you liked it, please leave me a comment. And, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. If you make one, leave me a comment and let me know that you made one. And you can find me on Facebook and send me a picture. I would love to see what you made and how you fill it. If you made a second one, leave me a comment. And once I have 10 people that um, leave me comments on these things, um, then I will start getting to work on making the tutorial for um, how to dissect books and how to fill that second one. And if you've saved up 10 of your glue caps, leave me a comment about that as well, because once I have about 10 people or more on that, I will do a video on how to use these. And I I promise you, you need to have at least 10 because once you see what we make with these crazy things, um, you will want to make more. And, and so having one or two will not be enough to satisfy you. You'll be trying to use up all your glue or begging anybody, phoning friends just to get their glue caps. So uh, start saving your glue caps. Let me know when you have about 10 of them. And when I have enough people, I will start uh, the tutorial for that. Um, again, I hope it was uh, worthwhile to watch. I hope I didn't fumble too much and make too many mistakes. I'm going to watch this and hope I can pass it through. Um, but that's it for now. And I hope to do more videos with you and uh, share more inspiration with you in the coming future. And uh, that's it. That's all. Have yourself a great day and have a creative week. Thanks. Bye for now.